This is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and we are continuing our exploration of the high efficiency full range drivers and what makes them special, what is the big difference between affordable single drivers and very expensive single drivers. And when you look back at, um, at, at the comment that Paul shared with me, so uh, he, he has a, a, a loudspeaker, a void pipe, a folded pipe that, that initially he used a louder in it, which is like a really expensive uh, high-end driver, and he changed it for a very cheap, very cheap driver, this SB Acoustics driver. I think they have some price there. Look at that price list at MediSound. That's the price. I'm not sure if it's a single unit or a pair. I think it's a single unit, but it's, it's like extremely affordable. And, and by doing this change, um, he, he didn't feel that, that he was cheated and it just sounds really good even with that. So, so what's the difference? So is, is there any, any point to pursuing uh, more expensive drivers for single drivers or is, is this good enough? Because uh, uh, here we had a report from Paul that this is a very promising, very good driver that, that he has had good ex experience with. So, so you can, if you want, you are thinking about building a single driver speaker, then it's not, not a obligatory to just, you know, spend like a, a whole year's savings on drivers because it can work extremely well, even if it's a, it's a cheaper driver. And in this case, as, as Paul has uh, shared with us, it has a, a plus compared to the expensive louder that it has really good bass. And, and with the louder, he was missing the bass. So, so there are pros and cons for all of them. And, and maybe if you want like good bass, then you don't even, then you don't need to go for that louder. And in the previous episode, I shared more about the bass and louder and etc. experiences if you want to listen to that in detail and explore things, <laughs> you can do that. But now let's just go back uh, to here. So what, what, why is there a wild price difference between louder and this driver? That's because of the magnetic flux density. So how strong the motor is. For the SB Acoustics it's 1.2 Tesla and for the louders it's between 1.8 to 2.1 Tesla depending on the model and, and that, that close to 2 Tesla or 2 Tesla range that's where it becomes really expensive because uh, 2.1 Tesla is the limit so, so when we use magnets to build a loudspeaker motor the highest achievable flux density with the, with the magnets we have on the planet today is 2.1 Tesla. We cannot make it any stronger. If you want stronger than that, you have to use a field coil driver. So with field coil, we can go even stronger than that. And, and stronger than field coil, you can use superconducting field coil. So it means that you, you, you cool it with liquid helium, a superconducting material, and, and with superconducting field coil magnets, I think now the, the maximum is around 10 Teslas. Just, just insanely strong, but uh, you cannot do that in a residential area. You need to live in an industrial area and have a, a liquid helium cooling system for that. Which, <laughs> If you don't have a research lab, you won't get a liquid helium cooling system. So maybe if you live like in a particle accelerator or something like that, you can also install your uh, superconducting field coils. But probably if you just want to build a pair of superconducting field coil driver using speakers for yourself, then the cost of that, because you need like an industrial installation, probably it will be in the tens of millions of dollars range. And, and of course you can't move those speakers <laughs> anywhere else. You have to g just travel to that industrial area to listen to them. But those would be the ultimate loudspeakers. Just wink wink for those of you who are thinking about things like that, building your own drivers. <laughs> and maybe you work at CERN 
or like Fermi Labs, <laughs> where you have the liquid helium cooling available. So, so basically, the issue is that uh, when we get this, uh, the flux density higher, it becomes much harder to optimize the driver for wide frequency bandwidth. We will have the tendency to, to have the, the mid-range and higher frequencies blown out of proportion compared to the rest. And that's just how magnetism works, how we can make the drivers work, and how the materials, physics, and everything go together. And, and it's, it's a huge, huge problem uh, how to resolve it, to, to keep the efficiency and, and the wide frequency range in check, in balance. And, and what, uh, what Lauder was trying to do is just, just to maximize the efficiency, maximize the motor strength, and when you do that, yes, you get 100% efficiency at these frequency ranges, but then it, it massively drops as you go lower in the frequencies. And, uh, and I'm going to show you something interesting. I'm going to show you my old drivers that I had for nearly two decades until their surrounds fall apart. And now you cannot get the same uh, cloth surround that they had. Uh, so I just retired them. I wanted to recon them with something different, but then it will totally change their sound. And at the time when that happened, then uh, Grzegorz from uh, Cube Audio has contacted me and he sent me a pair of Cube Audio FC8 drivers that, that I could use in my void pipes because it was like 100% uh, applicable. So, so in that void pipe, these two drivers are interchangeable. And, and actually here, I think in this data sheet it doesn't list, but this driver is 1.5 Teslas. So now from the 1.2, we are going jumping up to the 1.5 Tesla. And uh, if we would buy like the current version of this driver, which is actually not as nice frequency response as this one had, that would be maybe like um, $400 a pair, something like that range. So you see that we are changing like from the $60 to a much higher price range. And when we go to the louder range, then we go into the like a thousands of dollars range. And also, sadly, with, uh, with Cube Audio, we also go into the thousand dollar plus thousands of dollars price range. And the reason for that, and, and sadly, you don't see this in Cube Audio's website. You just really have to dig in and, and talk to them to get the details. But like the, this Cube Audio FC8 driver uh, that, that I got from Gregos from Cube Audio, it is 2.1 Tesla. So the magnetic flux density uh, in the magnetic field is 2.1 Tesla for this driver. So you get the same strength, same motor strength as you get for, the, for this louder. But what they did is that they dropped the efficiency, so they, they build the suspension and the structure in such a way that it doesn't allow uh, such extreme efficiency in the, in the high frequency range, but it just tremendously improves the low end. And, and they managed to pull off this trick, so actually, uh, officially, this driver is also 92 dB efficient, the same efficiency as, uh, I mean, sensitivity. Uh, 92 dB sensitive, not efficient. 92 dB sensitive, the same number as given for this cheap driver. But the difference between them is that it, it almost has like double the flux, magnetic flux density. So it has that insanely strong motor that the louders have, but optimized to deliver that strength in the base department instead of in the high frequencies. And yes, I can confirm that, that despite it just being a single driver, even at 20 hertz, it's, it's just astonishing. And it can play without inconveniencing the driver at the levels I'm listening to. Of course, if you want to go like, I don't know, like listen to at crazy volumes, an 8-inch driver will not be able to move enough air to produce that kind of volume. But if you are a, 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 
a reasonable human being with reasonable expectations, it will give you extraordinary results. And, and if you want to push that wide bandwidth with that level where the cube audio driver is representing and you want it to reproduce that like uh, 20 dB higher volume, then I got a big surprise for you because then you have to pay like the million dollar range and, and it's not like you can pick any million dollar equipment and, and let it pay like that for you. No, you still have to need a lifetime to, to put together a system, but a lifetime of knowledge, how to get that system, how to put it, how to build it, what will be the components. You probably have to design it and, and then execute it. And, um, because like in real life I haven't heard anything commercial that can do what the Cubo the UFC it can do but like 20 dB higher SPR. It doesn't exist on the planet. You have to build it if you want to. And I just given you how what is the money and what is the knowledge demand of that application. Um, so anyway, what else did I want to say? So basically what I wanted to tell you guys about and girls is that uh, like the 1.2 Tesla that is the flux density that you are getting with affordable full range drivers and there usually what you get is a, a nice balance between bays and highs and if you build a proper cabinet meaning a long enough void pipe you will get low end as well and very nice low end expan uh, ex expansion and when you go for higher Teslas, up to about 1.6 Teslas, you can get balanced sounding uh, high efficiency drivers. Like 1.6 Tesla is where you are getting to the 95, 96 dB per watt meter uh, sensitivity. And if you go higher than that, like the 100 dB, then it's the two Tesla range but then you get the unevenness so that the highs are much more overrepresented compared to the base even if it's like a Leo the or big like a 15 inch driver still you will have the same problem there that the highs are way way stronger than the woofer and surprise surprise the bigger the difference between the visor cone and the main driver the bigger the gap between the efficiency uh, for the highs and the base but that's for another video so what else I think I'm losing my train of thought uh, I'm after a long day a long working day and my brains are kind of fried by now but I hope this was still informative and uh, not that much of a rambling <laughs> so have an amazing day have fun exploring speakers exploring drivers and uh, Oh, just one more thing that I forgot to say that in the two Tesla range the Cube Audio is, is something of a unique phenomena because they are the only ones that I know of who have achieved to get that amazing flux density and keep a wide frequency range and I know on paper 92 dB looks kind of shit sorry for this language but uh, when you are uh, for myself, what I, I'm thinking about is that like 92 dB is the absolute minimum for me, my hearing. If, if your efficiency is below that, then, then long term I am not happy with that because it's not give, giving me the, the, the realism and, and uh, dynamic extension, dynamic range that, 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 that triggers the impression of... Uh, of of realize of extracting what is in the music so as the dynamic uh, capability of the loudspeaker increases i find that i can extract much more what is in the music and i can understand the music i can absorb it at a much much deeper level compared to using a, a low dynamic range loudspeaker and a 92 db for me is just the bare bones minimum However, I have to add that uh, sometimes these numbers don't exactly reflect reality because, for example, the, the Cube Audio FC8 is, even though it is called as a 92 dB driver, 
but it plays at least as loud as my 95 dB for stacks was. So it, on paper it's 3 dB less efficient, but in reality it sounds just as loud and the bass sounds like a million times better. So while uh, with the four stacks the bass was, it, it needed the right room to play right. So I, 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 I used it in, I think, about 12 different rooms, moving it to different places, and out of those 12, in uh, two or three rooms, in, actually in one room, in, in Stu's store, once we brought it down to my mentor's audio store, it sounded absolutely phenomenal, and that was one of the best bass that I ever heard in my life. Best kettle drum. And, and that was my one of my very best kettle drums I heard. It, it was like amazing. Uh, that was like one of, it, it was like hearing a live kettle drum, like a giant drum in the middle of the room and boom, like Lisa Gerald just wax it. <laughs> and it was that experience. And you could see the drum right there and then feel the air resonate and vibrate. And what? Like a, a single driver speaker doing that with a PX25 single ended zero feedback tube amp, and like well, like big eyes. And before that, we tried like uh, the the CJ 350 watt solid state flagship amplifier with with speakers using 12 inch drivers. Same same soundtrack, and the kettle drum sounded like nothing compared to that. It was like just the forceful whack, but there was no dimensionality, no body, no sound waves pulling back and forth, nothing, nada. And the single driver just totally killed, floored like a multi-driver speaker using absolutely massive drivers compared to that. And everyone was saying, no, it's probably the other driver hooked up to, to the amp and, and, every, and we were going and checking that, yeah, there was no cable going to the big driver speakers. It's only just the skinny void pipes saying that, that, uh, reproducing that music. But, but, but the driver required that room to play that well. And I also had like two more rooms um, that, that I could optimize that way to play that well, where the bass was just so phenomenal. But like nine other rooms, in some of them it was meh, kind of like an like introductory level hi-fi, and some of them were just like commercial gear level, like, like nothing at all. So, so that's the range. But with the Cube Audio driver, is like the, the same cabinet, it's just much more immune to where you are placing and it had great, has great bass in every room I tried. It just the character was different based on the room length. Uh, like e either like the uh, upper D bass or the lower D bass is just more, more prominent and more just like wow. So anyway. I think that, that that's about it. It's just uh, long-winded. So sometimes the DB uh, number don't tell the whole story. And sometimes it feels more, sometimes it feels less. Like I have... Uh, long story. Long story. I have another um, um, 92 dB speaker, the AOs. They are also 92 dB efficient, just like the Cube Audio but they sound a fraction as loud with the same amp, same room as the uh, Cube Audio driver. And, and it's kind of like, I get like at the mid-range and high frequencies, they, they have like a similar playing level, but the Cube Audio driver is way more extended in the high, so that gives uh, the impression that you hear louder, and the bass is just, it's kind of like with the AOs, like the bass is turned off compared to the Cube Audio, even though the bass is, by itself is good enough that when I compare it to the Mirage, so one channel I'm hooking up the Mirage, other channel I'm hooking up the, uh, the AOs, uh, the AO has almost as good bass as, as the two and a half way giant Mirage. So now it's, it's really, really time to stop this video. I'm really rambling and um, there's no cohesion whatsoever. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>